Hey guys, NickMock007 here again today, and I uh, wanted to show you how to do a function test and leak test for your dual stage uh, regulator. So, first thing is you're going to connect the regulator to your CO2 cylinder. Uh, then you're going to turn the regulator handle completely loose all the way counterclockwise. Then what you'll do is you'll uh, <clears throat> turn on the CO2 tank handle slowly and let CO2 inject into the regulator and you'll see the high pressure gauge uh, max out at about 800 PSI. At that point you turn off the CO2 tank and, and you will still have an 800 pressure reading at the high pressure gauge and then you wait six hours. When you come back, if the reading is the same, i.e. 800 PSI, the first stage of your dual stage regulator is good to go and you can proceed to the second stage. Now that you have 800 PSI of CO2 isolated in the first stage uh, chamber of your regulator, you're going to open up the needle valve. Uh, the solenoid will be powered off, i.e. it will not be plugged in, which is what I'm showing you. Now you'll turn the regulator handle clockwise to charge the second stage chamber and fill the regulator default outlet uh, to maximum. Now you'll go ahead and uh, turn the regulator handle all the way counterclockwise until it's completely loose. Now you want to make sure that CO2 tank is completely closed because you're about to disconnect the regulator from the tank. The idea here is to isolate the CO2 in the second uh, stage of your dual stage regulator. As you'll see, once I've got the regulator completely loose, and you can actually already see now that that tank is depressurized, uh, the cylinder is depressurized, you can see that that second lower pressure gauge is still holding pressure, which means that that air is, the CO2 is isolated in the second stage. Now what you'll do is wait about 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, it allows the second stage uh, diaphragm uh, to sort of uh, ease up um, and then you'll uh, jot down the low pressure gauge PSI reading and then you wait another six hours and if you come back and the change of the new PSI reading of that low pressure gauge is within one eighth uh, above or below the difference of the original reading you are set to go to step three. Then for the final stage, what you'll do is you'll release all the air in the second chamber and you'll get it reconnected back to the CO2 cylinder. Alright guys, so back with the final stage of uh, leak testing. And uh, as you can see, I've got it reconnected, uh, uh, the regulator reconnected back to the CO2 cylinder. Uh, it's all off right now, so you can see all the pressure gauges are um, on zero. Uh, so uh, here we go, let's get this thing... Uh, all hooked up finally and uh, finish the pressure testing. Alright, so let's make sure this is fully closed. Alright, regulator fully closed, CO2 is off, and the first thing that we're going to do now is we're going to charge both stage chambers here. So first thing, we're going to turn on the CO2 tank handle. And watch this gauge. All right. So we've got that pressurized. All right. OK, sorry about that. I actually had this turned the wrong way. So now uh, we've got the first stage pressurized and the second stage almost fully depressurized. Um, there's still a little bit of residual CO2 in that tubing. So what we're going to do is shoot to get that up to about 30 PSI. Alright, we are adjusted right at 30. So we've got the tank pressure of 800 PSI here and 30 PSI coming out over here. This is the solenoid right here. Right now that is powered off, uh, or it's not plugged in, so it's not getting power, which means the valve in there is closed. All right, so that is step one. 
Okay, step two, we are now going to turn on the solenoid uh, by plugging it in. And with it plugged in, that will open that valve and start letting CO2 out. So and I can start seeing CO2 come out in my tank through the diffuser. Uh, next step here, so we can start the pressure test on all these final fittings. Because uh, with the first part of the test, we've tested this piece and we've tested the internal uh, uh, chambers of the regulator. We've tested all of this after the regulator up to the solenoid. So now we have to finish testing all of these fittings to make sure they're not leaking. Uh, and we'll also test the bubble counter as well. Uh, so, uh, next step is to turn off the needle valve. Continuing on here, so here's uh, what I'm going to use as a uh, leak test solution. Um, didn't feel like buying anything, and uh, I could use dish soap, but uh, I have a small child, so... Secret recipe here is... Super Miracle Bubbles. Uh, yeah, just a uh, safe, non-toxic, uh, you know, blowing bubbles with your child kind of thing. So uh, that's what I'm going to use. I'll put all this on the fittings after the solenoid valve and uh, look for bubbles. So uh, that's what I'll be doing here. So far, so good. Not seeing any leaks here, so... We'll move on to uh, a bubble counter, but I'll keep checking these fittings here. So here's my bubble counter. Uh, just a cheap one, but it goes under the stand. You'll never see it. And uh, like I say, I uh, now have turned the needle valve on. You can see maybe two or so bubbles a second. I'll do a better count later. But um, it's just a rough tool anyways. And honestly, I think bubble counters are not necessary. And I'll probably get rid of this one eventually once I have my system up and running. Um, I think a drop checker is a more useful tool, but it's a good thing, uh, at least for me, uh, as I'm just working on getting my CO2 system set up, so um, I'll just check this for some leaks as well. Hopefully that's pretty good, so I think I'm going to call this CO2 check um, officially good. Good.